Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here, back again for another painting lesson. Gonna start out today with some sandy brown, raw umber, cadmium yellow, and a bit of the titanium white. Get a nice light brown color and start painting in the top right hand portion of this sky. Going to be doing something different for today, creating a concept art style painting. I'm actually creating a real painting with acrylic paint. I'm going to be doing it in this sort of new style, building on many other paintings that I've done and sort of still is in my own style, but I am being inspired by artworks that I've seen in a concept art style. Rather than narrate each of my color mixing as I go along like I normally do, I'm going to leave that to you to watch the titles on the screen. I may do more narration of that later on. And I'm going to talk first about what you need to paint this painting along with me today. I'm also going to talk about the tenets or the basic principles of a concept art style as I see them as an artist. Items you'll need are as follows. You'll need some acrylic paint. Any brand will do to get started. You can buy some nicer artist acrylic paint and go up in brand quality as you get more and more serious about art. But if you're just starting out, buy some cheap acrylics and start painting. It's invaluable experience just trying to paint. Get some cheap brushes, synthetic ones that you can get for 10 bucks in a pack. Just start there and then you can buy nicer brushes as you get more and more serious. For these paintings, I'm using very basic brushes that you can get on the cheap, maybe 4 or $5 a brush at most. I don't spend a lot of money on my brushes because I'm very hard on my brushes, and so I tend to buy brushes that I can get rid of and dispose of if I wear them out. That's just my personal preference. Some artists swear by getting a certain type of brush. I'm not one of those artists. If you're learning to paint, it does not matter. I've used very expensive brushes before when I was in school learning how to paint. I can't tell a huge difference in quality between those paintings that I've created and more recent works using cheaper brushes. It's not a huge difference, and for me, it's not a big enough difference to compel me to spend the money on expensive brushes. I am painting today on a canvas board. This one is 8 by 10 inches. You can buy these in packs of 10 to 12 pretty cheaply, so check that out. They're a great way to learn and to practice, and because I'm exploring a new style, they're perfect for me today creating this piece. I'm going to be doing a number of paintings in this style. It's been quite a hit on my time-lapse version, and so I'm excited to explore this higher contrast medium. We'll talk more about that in a minute, and I'll be doing more of these as we go along over the next few months. Okay, so you need the brushes. Just get a pack. Like I said, not too expensive. You're going to need a canvas board. Get some acrylic paints. The colors I'm using are as follows. Cobalt blue, Mars black, raw umber, cadmium yellow, and titanium white. That's it. I mix a lot of my colors. If you follow the channel regularly, you know this. I don't like to buy a lot of different colors. I like to mix them myself. I'm constantly adding a few colors here and there as I need to expand my palette. Often five colors will get you by. If you have white and black, red, yellow, and blue, you're good. You can mix a lot from that. If you need more of a range and you have a particular color you want in mind, maybe buy just that color if you have a very particular color you want to have a lot of on a piece. For my abstract art, I'll be more wide ranging with the colors that I'm using because I want a consistent blend. But for landscapes, I tend to mix a lot more and more intensively, so I'm more accurate with my actual shade and tone of my colors. I'm using a piece of cardboard that I've cut out from an Amazon box that I got in the mail. I do this frequently, it shows up well, it's a nice brown base for the paints to show up nicely on camera, and it's a great way to get a palette. Don't bother buying one of those acrylic palettes that you can buy at the art store. You don't need that unless you're painting outside like I occasionally do. Painting at home, a piece of cardboard will do. Get a cloth, like you can see the cloth there I have on the table. That is necessary because you want to cover your workspace. Paint gets everywhere. It's paint. You're going to drop the brush at some point. Wear old clothes, I would recommend. You can get a little easel, a little table easel, or a freestanding one like I do. But to start out, you can have a flat surface. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Just get started with some paint and have fun with it. That's the goal. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the concept art style now. You can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just filling in the distant layer here. I've got the sky in now, some of the foreground blocking. So now we're going to check out the concept art style and what's that all about. First things first, what is concept art? Concept art is art that is created with a purpose in mind. Typically it's created by artists working for a video game company or perhaps for film. They will design worlds or scenes, usually landscapes or maybe close-ups of characters and maybe weapons. Anything that you would see in a video game, they usually have a concept artist who's rendering out many variations of a similar theme used kind of early on in the process. Typically, concept art is a huge market and there's lots of great artists working in this medium. 
You can go here on YouTube, type in concept art digital painting, and you will find hundreds of fantastic top-notch artists. And that's where you can see a lot of this amazing work. Now, this is usually a digital medium, which means they're creating all of the paintings on a computer using things like Photoshop and other art painting programs to create these works. I'm creating my version, my take on this style, with actual paint, because I think that's interesting. It's something a little bit different. If you want to check out a free digital painting platform, you can download Krita. I've used it before. I have a few digital paintings here on the channel. I'll probably do a few more eventually. You can use this free program, Krita. There's lots of pre-made brushes that you can get from other artists. If you really want to do digital art and do concept art in the original medium, check that out. If you want to paint along with me today, that's even better. So what are some style notes that I've made as an artist about this medium? The first thing is light source location. Where is the lightest point of the painting? Where is the light source? Where's the sun? Where's the glowing orbs? Often this style is fantasy or fantastical or sci-fi. I've seen a wide range of styles. It's a very romantic style. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Typically the light source, whatever that is, two glowing suns in the distance, whatever, it's usually in the very, very background. It's the farthest thing from the viewer, and it's usually in the painting. So the lightest point is gonna be in the painting, in the far distance, it's backlit. That means everything moving forward into the foreground is going to be darker than the lightest portion. So I've created a very light, almost white, yellow color on the right-hand side, that kind of sandy yellow-brown, and that's my base. That's gonna be the lightest portion of this piece. Now, the next thing about the style is that it's very high contrast, meaning that the lightest area is going to be basically white, and the darkest areas are going to be your deepest black. This is because the style is going for an epic drama scope. When you're doing something that's very epic, you need to have huge contrast in your values, light to dark. And because of that, we're going to be going very, very dark black on the closest rocks to us in a minute, and that will contrast nicely with what is going on in the background. I will put in pure white paint in the background where the sun is, and then I will contrast that with the blacks. They tend to be somewhat monochromatic, these paintings. They tend to focus on just a few colors, very cinematic that way, just like film is often shot with blues and orange popped and pushed forward. It has kind of a filter effect on it. I am keeping a very limited palette, mostly grays, blues, and a bit of yellow for contrast. That's it. It's basically almost a monochrome painting that I'm creating today. The highlight of the style, the hallmark of it, is uniformity and consistency with the colors. It's not typically bright, art poppy. It's typically more subdued or uniform in its palette and its choices for the style. The high contrast style really reminds me of the Baroque masters. I'm thinking like a chiaroscuro style. You can look at paintings from that period that have extreme contrast, black backgrounds, intense figures that are lit from underneath. It's very dramatic, and that style is definitely an influence on this more modern concept art style, I think. It also reminds me, especially in the skies, of the Romantic period. I'm particularly thinking of a French painter, and apologies for my horrible French, Theodore Jericot. Um, it's spelled Theodore. And then Jerry Colt, it looks like Jerry Colt. Jerry Colt, G-E-R-I-C-A-U-L-T. Look him up. I'm thinking of his one painting, Evening. That painting has this sort of epic scope, huge contrast, sense of grandeur. You can see the mountain in the background is big, and I'm creating that far back mountain, larger than I normally would paint a distant mountain because I want it to have this epic scope. Concept art is supposed to be epic and artists working in this style are trying to create art that producers of video games and films will pick and really capture the feel and the aesthetic of the game or the film and so because of this things are typically blown out of proportion everything is big and imposing and contrasting and that's a hallmark of this concept art style like i said it's drama it's high fantasy it's sci-fi that's sort of the aesthetic style so that is really in a nutshell what concept art is about. The best way to find out about it is go on Google, just type in concept art. You'll see hundreds of examples of this and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. I've seen ones that are very snowy, lots of white. I've seen ones that are more subdued and more blues and grays like I'm doing here. Ones with lots of greens, all kinds of different stuff you can find. 
check it out. The best way to learn about this style is to watch painters create it. You can watch, like I said, many, many fantastic digital artists create their work here on YouTube. Subscribe to their channels. They deserve it. They do really hard work. They work for hours on a single piece. I really like this style. It's something that I admire. And it's a little bit different from my channel, so I thought it would be fun to explore sort of this medium and give it a try. Okay, so you can see I'm bringing in the black. I'm really trying to amp up the contrast here. The darkest thing in the front will be even darker, and the things in the back will be a little bit lighter. I've put in some of the white and trying to create some streaks, start to put in a little bit of highlights on these rocks. I'll eventually get the right amount of contrast. That's too dark there, so I'll have to slow that down with some white, but that's pretty easy to do. Here's some gray mix, add some white. Soften that far distant hill. It's way too forward in the mix. It's too dark. Successive layers is what you're going for. You really want to have lots of layers in this style things in the distance that are medium, things a little bit closer should be about twice as big, and the closest thing to you should be quite large, taking a good chunk of the canvas up. The little rock on the right hand side is going to grow a good deal because that's the closest thing to us and we're going to really make that larger. I've also had the background interacting with the foreground by the means of this sort of cove, this water coming in. 
and that's how we're leading the viewer's eye from the left to the right, upwards towards the sky, using water to sort of translate very, very light, almost white in the distance, and then it starts getting a little bit bluer and a little bit darker and transitions into more of a gray because all the shadows from these giant rocks here in the water will darken them a bit and it'll reflect some of the color of the rocks around it. Okay, making some more of the lighter gray mix. This is going to contrast and make some highlights on these distant rocks. Little tiny brush there, little bright brush, angle brush would work as well. Little tiny quick strokes. I could have been more careful with this. I was doing more of an overall softening, and I want it to be a little more high contrast than that. Sometimes in painting, you have to put something down, see how it looks, and then make adjustments like you do. Again, when you're painting along at home, don't worry about making it look exactly like my painting. In fact, don't try to do that. Create your own piece. Try to find something that you like about this piece, kind of follow it along loosely. But make changes on purpose. Try something new. If it doesn't work, you can always paint over it later. You can take a hair dryer, dry it off, and in five minutes be painting over it, and no one will ever know. Putting in some more white, pure white here in the background, it needs to be lighter and make this transition smoother from the background to the foreground. More of the cobalt blue here. More of the white. The canvas is showing through strongly here, providing a great deal of texture, which I like. I'm really scumbling over it and allowing the texture to come forward, doing thin layers of paint so you still have the graininess of the fibers of the canvas showing up, the canvas board, I should say. That's great because it adds sort of an atmosphere to this piece that I think it wouldn't have otherwise. Add a little bit of water, it'll thin out your paints, and there you go. If you really want to be dramatic, you could paint this same piece an oil paint and see what the contrast is like, thinking that it would be fun to do a few pieces like this in an oil paint medium. Let me know if you're interested in that in the comments below. Thank you to everyone who left a like on my last time-lapse version of the same painting. Huge help with the YouTube algorithms to leave those likes. Please keep leaving them on this painting as well. It helps me to grow my channel. Hello to all my new subscribers. We're getting so close to 2,000. I can't wait. Thank you so much again for all of your support. It means a lot to me and helps me to continue to reach my artistic goals and keeps me motivated to keep painting each and every week here on Impulsive Artistry. Bringing in the closest, darkest section here, rocky beach area of this cove. My idea for this piece is sort of like a pirate's cove. That was sort of the conception, the concept for the concept art. More black, again, pushing the contrast in these values, huge part of painting in this style. And because I've gotten successively darker, immediately you have atmospheric, intense perspective. Automatically, I'm not doing anything fancy, it's just larger structures, larger shapes, getting closer, darker, immediately pushes everything back into the distance without me doing anything.
putting in some darker contrast up here in the sky. Take some more of that sandy brown mix that I made at the beginning with lots of yellow, and we'll start to push that across the left hand side. Back to that dark blue mix. Again, some darker contrast lines with the gray mix. I hope that you found this concept art lesson useful. If you do paint one of my paintings and recreate one of them yourself, I would love to see it. You can go onto Facebook at Impulsive Artistry and find me there, and you can message me. I would love to see a photo of your painting, your version of one of my pieces. It would make my day, but I would love to help you in any way that I can, and I would love to see your versions of my pieces. Putting in some highlight contrast lines here. I really like the way this came out. Adding a little more black and darkening up that gray mix here to put some contrast lines back in this more distant boulder near the bottom because the light is hitting the top section and maybe a little bit darker near the bottom, the base of that more distant rock. I'm liking the way this is all flowing. It's a little bit too high contrast on the right and I need to mute it to some more of the black and the gray. See, that doesn't look right because not as much light will hit that based on the angle of the rock because it's right in front of it 
the light is behind it, it's going to be the darkest thing in my image. But overall, I'm really liking how this painting is coming together. These cliffs are angled more, so more of the light is going to hit the front of them. Some smaller, thinner lines here. Using a bright brush, which has a very sharp edge on the end of it. I use this brush all the time. I just love the effect and the way it looks. Just load the brush by pulling it straight down on each side equally, and you'll get a nice, fine, thin edge. Pull it straight down, okay, through the paint. You can use that edge to create some little tiny nicks, some little details, and it looks great. Trying to straighten this edge a little bit more. There we go. Adjusting the angles here a little bit to make it flow better. I'm going to bring the water all the way across the left-hand side of the painting. I feel like having it intersect the edges a bit more will help it to flow and will push back this left-hand side ridge because it's farther back and it's not laying correctly right now, so I'm going to push it back. Bringing in some more of the white again for that high contrast, that white right against those black hills just really shimmers. Some more of the dark gray mix here, putting in maybe some pines or some trees. Quick, jagged motions to create that with the brushwork. Perfection is not the goal. The goal is to improve, to learn from our mistakes, and to keep going. Don't judge your art based on other people's art. They create their art, you create yours. You should try to create the best art that you can. You're not going for perfection, you're going for a high average. Creating art in a way that's compelling and dynamic. Bringing in a little more of the brown, I felt like it would be fun to shift this to a warmer tone, closer up, a little bit of white in there as well to lighten it up. I feel like putting in that top right line on the top of the more distant hill was a mistake. Diffusion happening before, and I've sort of lost that, so I might adjust that a little bit. I'm really liking the way this brown is playing with this black, it's looking quite nice. Bringing some warmth through the foreground, it was just all too cool too much blue Some more light blue, white and blue, the clean, bright brush. And we are minutes away from finishing this piece.
I will be back soon with another painting lesson. In the meantime, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, and get notifications each and every time that I upload a new painting. Appreciate all of your support, your kind comments, the likes that you leave. It means the world to me. Thank you so much again.